Yo, what is up, witches and wizards, muggles and nomads? I'm going to make and today. I want to talk to you all about exactly where you can find those fortress foundables you have been looking for for so long. I know that it seems like there are a couple of books or there are a couple of pieces that I need to prestige my pages, but I can't seem to get them to drop. And I don't know if that's because I'm using the wrong runestone or if it's because I'm in the wrong chamber. Well, today I want to talk about one of those aspects of fortresses and how it will help you prestige those pages faster in Wizards Unite. So first of all, I have to give a huge shout out to a few members of the community, uh, Camshy, Andalov, uh, Lunst Valentine, all of those people helped create these statistics and helped break them down and also uh, made some graphics for it, as well as, of course, Orange Wizard 2019, who um, pretty much just supplies a lot of the, the graphics that you see cycling around and all of that good stuff. So I wanted to make a video on that today, specifically. Um, my friend James over at Wizards News did a really cool video breaking down all of the statistics in each chamber and what foundable you're looking for and how you can kind of go about that. But I just wanted to do something that's visually a little bit easier to digest. I know that whenever I look at spreadsheets like that, I just lose myself because there's so much information. So these uh, guys did a really great job breaking down this information in very simple graphics. So I want to go ahead and start talking about those with you right now so you can know everything that you need to know the next time you go out to farm some fortresses. So what we're going to do now is I'm going to basically go through these images. I'm going to break down each and every one of these items uh, and just kind of show you how you can find them. So if you'll check out the on-screen images here, you can see that we're in the challenge registry looking at books one, the first page of the first challenge registry. So those are the books. That's where they live. And on this page, we have a beginner's guide to transfiguration, advanced rune translation, Hogwarts, a history, magical water plants of the Mediterranean, and unfogging the future. Now, the way that this works is they took the range. So there were reports of ruins ch uh, chamber one, all the way up to ruins chamber four in some cases for these books, as you can see with magical water plants of the Mediterranean. And essentially what they're saying is these are the locations in which they can be found. So you can find them in ruins chamber four, but the highest probability, as you can see, is also displayed and that will be ruins chamber one for all five of these books. So if you need all five of these, your time will be best spent in that one specific chamber because you'll be more likely to get drops from all the way across the board. Now, if you are looking for one particular book, and I'm looking at Magical Water Plants of the Mediterranean because I actually need this. I also need Life and Lies of Alvis Dumbledore, which we'll talk about in just a moment. But if you look at the range, this will be a very important way for you to be able to separate this particular book from all of the other four that are on this page. If you look at all the other four, you can find them from Ruins 1 to Ruins 3. Now that's great. If you need all of these books, like I said before, just hop into Ruins Chamber 1 and farm that bad boy until you get everything that you need. But with Magical Water Plants of the Mediterranean, it is the only book whose range extends to Ruins Chamber 4. So although your highest probability to find this book is in Ruins Chamber 1, you can do that, but you'll probably be getting lots of the other books as well. You can jump into Ruins Chamber 4, and you will only be able to find this particular book in that location. So that's some, some logic that I'll be applying throughout the entire video. And again, this is just based on the averages. They have over 5,500 data points um, at the posting of the last graphics that I was able to see. They're probably closer to 7,500 or even 10,000 at this point because there are a lot of contributors. So I'll also leave a link to that down below as well as James's uh, statistics video. If you're more into spreadsheets and you're more analytically and data minded, um, then that will probably be a really good resource for you. So make sure you check out those resources and definitely contribute to those fortress uh, data points if you feel so inclined. On to books number two, we have a history of magic, a new theory of numerology, most potent need potions, essential defense against the dark arts and the standard book of spells. Now these are a little bit different. Uh, other than a history of magic that is really most often found in Ruins Chamber 1, the other four will be found most likely in Ruins Chamber 2. So you see kind of what I was saying with the first set of books and the second set of books have a lot of overlap. There are a lot of shared spaces. So the loot pool is massive. When you think about you know, 10 to 15 to 20 books that you can find all in the window of a few, it'll be uh, a lot easier if you can find one that you need that you can somehow separate and divvy out from the rest. 
Now another good example, kind of like we talked about with the Water Plants of Mediterranean, the Essential Defense Against the Dark Arts book is the only one on this page that you can find in Ruins Chamber 5. So all the others are in Ruins 4, and if you need Essential Defense Against the Dark Arts, then Ruins Chamber 5 is gonna be where you need to live. Moving on to books three, Easy Spells to Fool Muggles, Jiggery Pokery, Hocus Pocus, the Adventures of Martin Miggs the Mad Muggle, The Life and Lies of Albus Dumbledore, which I said earlier that I need a copy of, and The Tales of Beetle the Bard. So those all kind of graduate, except for Easy Spells to Fool Muggles, which is stuck highest probability in Ruins Chamber 2. All the other four are highest uh, probability for those will be in Ruins Chamber 3. So again, looking at these and trying to figure out, this is kind of one of the most muddled uh, versions, or the muddled pages, because all of these have a range of one to five and highest probability being shared between four of those books in Ruins Chamber 3. So again, it's kind of tricky. It's all going to come down to RNG, to be 100% honest. I would be lying to you if I said you are guaranteed these drops every single time in this specific location just because the loot pool is shared and probabilities will always come into this. So it's kind of tricky to to see you know exactly what's gonna be dropping where and exactly when you can find it every single time. But by playing the game of numbers and by using probabilities, these are going to be the easiest ways to find them. On to joke products one, you have extendable ears, the nose biting teacup, dung bomb and exploding whiz popper. Now this is a little bit better because there are a little bit uh, more clear lines that have been painted here for us. Extendable ears and nose biting teacup are most often found in ruins four and have a range of ruins th two and three to tower one and two respectively. Now that's a little bit more specific and that's nice obviously for our cause because it helps us narrow down the way that we can get these bad boys, but the Dung Bomb and the Exploding Whiz Popper go from Ruins 5 to Tower Chamber 4 and are most often found in Tower Chamber 2. So if you're using those Rune Stones and you see, wow, I, I grind a lot of Tower 1 and 2 and I'm absolutely full up on Dung Bombs. What do I need to do to get some more Nose Biting Teacups? Well, just downgrade yourself a couple of chambers and you might be able to find some more of those. On to Joke Products 2, we have the Fang Frisbee, Screaming Yo-Yo, Trick Wand, and You Know Poo. And as we see uh, the, these foundables getting more and more difficult, or as they start to go higher and higher, you'll see uh, the, the loot pool start to shrink a little bit, so it's easier to find what you're looking for. Now, the Fang Frisbee and the Screaming Yo-Yo will have a range from one, Ruins 1 to Tower 2, respectively, and Ruins 3 to Tower 2. Again, pretty straightforward at this point. You're starting to see the separation a little bit in the foundables and how we can find them easier. Uh, just by using those specific towers. Now the Canary Creams and the Portable Swamps on Joke Products Chapter 3, or Book 3, however you want to say it, Page 3, are the exact same. You'll be able to find them in the same location. The only difference between them and the Skyving Snap Box is you just add a couple of towers to it. So Ruins 5 to Tower Chamber 4 for the Snack Box, and the highest probability there for those three will be Tower 1 for the Creams and the Swamp, and Tower Chamber 2 for the Skyving Snack Box. Now, as we move on to Magical Devices, we'll see that not only do you get to graduate a little bit, but it's like really starting to push you up into the higher levels and those ranges of Forest Chambers and Dark Chambers as we start to get to see in just a little bit. So the highest probability for a Time Turner is gonna be in Forest Chamber 3. It does range from Forest 2 to Forest 5, but right there in the middle at 3 is gonna be your best bet. Now the range of the Probity Probe is going to be Forest 2 to Dark 1 and then Forest 4 right there in the middle. Same uh, for the Skeeter Quick Quotes Quill. And then the Sneakoscope will be Forest 4 to Dark 3 with the highest probability being Dark Chamber 1. These are starting to get a lot trickier, but as I said earlier, as you get higher and higher and higher in these levels, it's easier and easier to find certain foundables. Now for Magical Devices page 2, we have the Secrecy Sensor, Deluminator, Harry and Sirius's two-way mirror, and the Spectre Specs. Uh, the Deluminator is a huge favorite of mine. I actually want to get one and put it on my shelf soon. So hopefully I can find it in the wild, capture it, and get rid of all that uh, terrible confoundable magic so I can put it up on my shelf. So here's where you'll be able to find those. The Secrecy Sensor in Forest Chamber 4, the Deluminator in Forest 5, the Harry and Sirius two-way mirror in Dark 1, and the Spectre Specs in Dark 1 also. Now the ranges for the two-way mirror and the Spectre Specs are identical, 
but the Secret C sensor and the Deluminator are not. There's just a little bit of difference there. Now, Symbols, Wizarding World, page one, the Dark Mark, Deathly Hallows are both able to be found most often in Tower Chamber 3. Then the Makuza Crest will be uh, matching the Ministry Crest in that you can find both of those in Forest Chamber 2. The ranges are a little bit different on those. The Crest can only go up to Forest 3, whereas the Ministry Crest can go all the way up to Forest 4. So if you're looking for that Ministry Crest, you know that you can go to Forest Chamber 4 and you won't have to worry about the loop pool being as difficult to find. On Symbols 2, you can see all of the wonderful crests from the Houses of Hogwarts. We have Gryffindor, Ravenclaw, Slytherin, Hufflepuff, and the Hogwarts crest itself that combines all four of those houses. And those are going to be most often found in the tower chambers. Gryffindor Tower 3, Ravenclaw Tower 4, Slytherin Tower 5, uh, Hufflepuff Tower 5, and the Hogwarts crest Tower 5 as well. Now the ranges are about the same for these, but as you can see in the image, there's a little bit of differentiation, which will help you separate the way that you can find some of these house crests. On to Symbols 3, you have Department of Magical Transportation Emblem, Forest 2, Department of International Magical Cooperation Emblem at Tower 5, and then you have Department of Magical Accidents Emblem at Tower 5, Forest 2 for Department of Magical Law Enforcement, and for the Regulation of Magical Creatures. So some of those are the same. Uh, obviously you have Magical Law Enforcement and reg Regulation of Magical Creatures matching at Forest 2 and then uh, magical or international magical cooperation emblem and magical accidents matching in tower five. They couldn't have named these anything that was like a little bit shorter and easier to say. Gosh, feels like I'm reading. <laughs> it feels like I'm reading a tongue twister. Now these are the final two pages that we are going to be approaching here. The ones of Dumbledore's army. And these require some insane numbers of fragments. I don't know if there's anybody out there that even has both of these pages gold yet. There might be one or two or a few people. I haven't seen a whole lot of that. Uh, but if you have these pages at gold, hats off. Amazing work, congratulations. I wanna see those pictures. Make sure you go to my Discord and post those pictures because I wanna see that. That sounds amazing. Uh, you have Harry Potter, Ron Weasley, Jenny Weasley, and Cho Chang all here. Uh, on this particular page and everybody except for Cho's wands will be found most likely in Dark Chamber 3. Uh, the exception being Cho Chang's wand will be found most often in Dark Chamber 5. Now last but not least we have the Wands of Dumbledore's Army page 2 and we have Hermione, Fred, George, Luna, and Neville all here. Hermione is the only one you will be able to find most often in Dark 3 on these pages, uh, and the other highest probabilities, Fred, George, Luna, and Neville all being on Dark Chamber 5. Now, I'm I've said most often, and that's me talking about the highest probability. There are percentages of these drops out there in those particular chambers and in those particular ranges. Now, I know this is kind of a long video and it's kind of a weird video to just sit here and talk about pictures and things like that, but this is actually really, really good information. So I didn't want to just, you know, take that information and, and pawn it off as my own. I really do want to give a big shout out to everyone that has contributed. There are tons of people contributing to these spreadsheets and all of this information that we have now represented in graphical form. Again, I want to give a big shout out to Cam Shy, uh, Lunce Valentine, Endelov, all of their team that has been working on this, and of course, Orange Wizard for making another graphic representation. There are tons of images of this stuff out there, and again, it will all be in my Discord channel. If you want, you can go ahead and follow that link down below in the description, join up, start being part of the conversation and all of that good stuff. So I'll have those images again in the drive folder down below. And this is essentially one of the best tools that we've gotten so far. It's telling us really, really specifically, hey, if you want to go get this thing, then here is your chance to do it. So I hope that this was really informative to you and was able to help you at least in some degree on grinding all of that stuff in Fortresses and Wizards Unite. That is it for today's video. If you enjoyed this content and you got something of value, please let me know by leaving a like down below as well as clicking that red subscribe button and ringing that notification bell so you know the next time I produce a piece of Harry Potter content. Thank you so much for joining me in the new year. I hope you had a safe and happy celebration with your family and you were able to 
to uh, really have a good time and ringing in the new decade. I can't wait to see what this year looks like for content for this channel. I'm really looking forward to covering Harry Potter Magic Awaken whenever that comes out. And I'm very, very excited to take you guys along for the ride. So thank you again for watching this video and until next time, peace.